m 140 i shadow edition in case you didn't know had to have pro nav and it had to be in black those were the only two conditions i was looking for because this car isn't going to be staying stock for too much longer so the modifications have actually started already so this morning i took it to get the gray conides wrapped in gloss black so if anybody is interested in getting it done that's how it looks i feel like it makes such a difference to the front end private registration plate is on that's another thing as well that makes a big difference to the car it adds a personal touch to it and then on top of that i dechromed the badges so black m style badges on the side m performance stickers were already on the car i was in two minds whether or not i should leave those on guys let me know should i take those off or should i leave them on standard orbit gray wheels black badges on the back i also changed that badgering to a gloss black badgering and the exhaust tips i went for some bigger exhaust tips personally i'm not a fan of the sort of carbon tip with the exhaust bit in the middle i prefer just having one solid exhaust tip like it is they do look pretty massive at the moment but once i get a diffuser extension and some rear spats that will look a lot better i think spoiler was already on when i bought the car and also i switched out the mirror indicators to the smoked ones that are dynamic these mirror caps again were already on the car but i will be changing them to some proper carbon ones because i don't like the look of those but whilst i was doing that this morning we did have a bit of an accident so if you look over here which you'll probably notice from the cinematic video the mirror is cracked and that is because when i was prying that out i applied too much pressure and it cracked so if anybody's going to be doing the dynamic indicator mod be very careful because these things are like over 100 quid from bmw but the way to do it is push the mirror all the way back like that and then put a wooden spoon in and then just sort of pry it out gently don't use a tool that they send with these kits because it's small and it doesn't evenly distribute the pressure across the mirror and it just cracks inside wise pretty standard bmw interior oh yeah one more thing i did was installed the aluminium style pedals which just give it that more premium touch and we have got the harman Kardon, which it's nowhere near as good as Bang Nolte one in the Audis, but it does the job way better than the stock BMW sound system, which is terrible. driving the M140i apologies it's taken so long to do this but genuinely I've been so busy and to be honest I've just been driving around in the S5 my sister's been driving this car so I haven't really had chance to do a proper first drive in it but here we are at 1am in the morning and you join me during Ramadan so I am awake late but what I was thinking of doing is I'll do a back-to-back -back first drive with this versus the Audi S5 because I've literally just been out in the S5 filming some content and I'm now shooting the first drive in the M140i just to compare but in the space between me driving the S5 and then jumping in this we did get some rain so the world the roads are quite greasy and if you've seen these cars on YouTube you'll know that they are quite dangerous yeah these cars are 
quite dangerous if you drive them. Well, if you don't drive them properly, I guess. One mistake people make with these cars is they jump in them and drive them or try drive them like an RS3 or a Golf R. But you can't do that in this car because for one, there's no limited slip lift. And two, when this car goes, it's not like an M car. It doesn't give you no warning. So it'll just snap out. And before you know it, you're in a bush. So I do, I do need to be quite careful with the uh, road conditions. We have got some good tires on it. We've got some Michelin Pilot 4S's. So we should be okay. But I'm not gonna be thrashing it. Really just to get a feel of what this car's like because I've not driven one of these for about two or three years. So right now I'm in comfort mode and it just feels like a normal one series in comfort mode, if I'm honest. But right off the bat, this road is quite bumpy and I've noticed that the rear end on this car is quite floaty. It almost feels disconnected from the car. So I think definitely on the build journey for this car, I am going to be doing some serious handling mods. So let's, okay. Right, do you know what? Let's put it in Sport Plus. Let's be brave. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to put it in Sport. Just until I get used to this car properly. It's the first time going out in it and I don't want to end up in a bush. So I'm going to leave it in Sport. Even though Sport Plus, you've still got traction on. It's almost like MDM mode. But Yeah, you know, because this car's got the OPF GPF, there's like no noise whatsoever in the cockpit. All of the noise coming through on camera is electronically being pumped from the speakers. But I'll tell you what, this car's got some flipping torque. I don't know what gear I'm in right now, but it's just, I think it's 500 newton meters, but you can feel that 500 newton meters. It feels a lot quicker. Back end just stepped out then a little bit. And I didn't even realize it had gone until I was halfway in the slide. Again. Yeah, this is definitely a two-handed a two-handed car when the road's greasy and there's no LSD. You know if I could describe the way this car feels, this is probably going to be a a bit of a silly comparison, but it almost feels like if anybody's driven an American muscle car once you get the traction, this car's pretty rapid in a straight line, but as soon as you hit a bend, or as soon as you break traction, it starts to fall apart a little bit, just like the muscle cars. And that's the way I'd probably describe it. Just my analogy again, the back end went, just then. Yeah, you do have to be very careful with this car. Very careful. Now I know why my insurance is so high. Because a lot of these have been binned. Oof. Okay, yeah, that back end is very floaty. I don't know how well you're picking this up because I've got my gimbal attached. but So it's absorbing some of the bumps, but ah, that back end. I'm literally bouncing all over the place right now. If anybody's got one of these, let me know what handling mods I should do first. I was talking to my friend who's got one and he's put some Powerflex mats in, which he said do make a drastic difference. Oof. Yep. Okay, we've got a straight road. Once you get into 
third gear this car is rapid even from standard I cannot wait to tune this car. I cannot wait to tune this car. I think this is the first car I'm going to send to space. If you've been following my channel for a while, I did own one of these just over three years ago. Didn't really do much to it. I knew the car was a beast back then, but I ended up selling it. Here we are back in the B58. Cannot believe it. Three years later. But this car, I think, is going to be definitely definitely a classic the b58 is an absolute beast of an engine so i'm not going to be selling this anytime soon you can see the traffic light flickering there yeah that back end is all over the place it's actually laughable <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna put an lsd on this and honestly, if I had the funds for it, I'd probably try and get this converted to an X-Drive. But I was reading on some of the forums and it is big money, big boy money to send this into an X-Drive. I think you're looking at somewhere like 10 grand. Do I really want to be putting 10 grand into this car to convert it to an X-Drive on top of the additional mods that I'm going to plan on doing? I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how well this car does on the channel. If anyone wants to sponsor the build, you know where I'm at. Drop me a message. But comparing this to the Audi S5, because I've just literally been out in the car, it feels substantially quicker. Substantially quicker. The S5 is around 333 brake horsepower. I think these are underrated slightly from factory, so it's pushing. Let me just hop it back into Pico for the time being. I think this is pushing around 370, 370 brake horse or people claim they've had them dynoed from stock and they're pushing around 370 which is probably why it feels quicker but obviously with the S5 you've got permanent traction which I do like with this no traction when it's wet off the line it's all over the place but as soon as you get grip it just goes this thing's definitely a, a Mexico car once it's rolling. But initial impressions, I like the car. I do like the car. I cannot wait to take this car on some proper drives in summer. I mean, even from even from stock, if you've got one of these and you're planning on keeping it on stock and you're just going to do some exterior modifications it's a nice bit of kit and value for money genuinely i know people like to throw that term around a lot value for money especially with a recession everything's getting expensive this car there is nothing like it in this in the price bracket golf R, audi s3 four pot boring four I'd say between 18 to 25 grand you can get yourself into one of these decent mileage good service history and you've got a three litre six cylinder engine which is an absolute weapon and it's a it's an awesome daily driver As I said, this video, just a quick first drive. I will do a proper Mexico drive, I guess, another time. And I have got lots of modifications planned for this car. As I said at the start of the video, we've got the M2 CS front end going on this thing. It's gonna absolutely transform it. And then I am gonna be sending it to space. If anybody's, fasting during the holy month of ramadan i hope it's going well for you i hope you're having a blessed month so far let me know how you're finding it alhamdulillah my ramadan is going good so far 
but Alhamdulillah I'm I'm good I'm just enjoying being able to experience all these different cars I mean we had the S we've got the S5 we've got the 140i I had the S3 a couple of months back the Golf R the GTI the R32 lots of cars lots of cars I've also got the 840i and a couple of other cars that I haven't yet published on the channel but life is good life is good so first impressions summarize real quick quick car if you just passed and you're gonna buy one of these be very careful that's all I'm gonna say don't drive it like a Golf R or a Quattro this car is based on your base spec one series so BMW have the engineers of BMW have literally thrown a beast of an engine into a base spec one series so when you put the when you put that formula together you can imagine what the results are chassis does struggle a little bit to hold up but otherwise it is a very very good car Not, not really much else to say. Just put a little bit of fuel in, just for this video. Jeez. The S5, let's go. is a timeless piece of kit. This quattro system is sick. It's just endless grip. And I was actually thinking, I feel like 300, between 300 and 600 brake horsepower is the sweet spot for having fun on a normal road without losing your license. Anything after that becomes a bit of a handful and Frankly, you just end up not being able to use all of that power because it's just way too quick. But this car is probably around 340 bhp, give or take 5 or 10 bhp, because I feel like this engine was underrated from factory. But it's a nice amount of power. It isn't rapid, but it's quick. 0 to 60 in sub 5 seconds. Supercharged engine definitely a timeless engine i will say this if you're a petrol head like me just taking your car out for a blast when the roads are empty late at night is highly therapeutic highly therapeutic